Okay, so I want to do a small recording on some of the items that we can uh, model and do some line work uh, on this cloud data. This is not a complete set of scans, but uh, we do have three scans here of the Bowery um, site. So first thing I like to do uh, whenever I'm dealing with something like this is to just kind of make it easier to see everything. There's a few ways to do this, uh, but one way I like to do it is just a simple uh, slice command. So I do a slice, and I can do it a couple of different ways. Um, what I like to do is actually use VirtuServe and just pick a point that is right on the ground, and then pick a point just above the ground. All it cares about are the two elevations between it. So then if I switch back, you can see I have my uh, slice here. And then what I always do, since I start on the ground, I just shift it up one time. You can see the ground goes away. It stops sort of interfering. Uh, with the view and then I have a thin slice for everything. Now the reason I do this thin slice uh, to start off with is because now we can do like a three-point uh, circle command and this is a cubit three-point circle you can adjust it between 2D and 3D modes but you can see as I do that I can get these tanks very easily just by uh, snapping to any of the exterior points. I traditionally try to spread them out a little bit just to make them uh, more accurate because the longer area that you give it, uh, the more um, the more along that radius that it has to to work with. <clears throat> okay, so we have these uh, done, and if you wanted them to be 3D, then let me just change this to a wireframe here. If you want this to be 3D, then all you have to do is do AutoCAD's extrude command. You can see it's taking these circles. In this case, it's waiting for uh, an extrusion point. I'm not exactly sure how far these go. Let's just say they go up to here, to the wall, or to the ceiling. So I pick a point there. And you can see I've got those uh, extruded. Now, I'm sure they go further, but that's the extent of what the scan data is going to let me see. OK, so some of the other stuff, um, you know, doing some piping. Um, and here what I'll do is bring back all the points, do another slice, and this time instead of doing a thin set of slices, what I'll do is actually give it a thicker slice, but it's going to be above the floor, below the ceiling. And that's just to eliminate data above and below it that could get in the way. Okay, so what I would do here, um, even if we were just doing a simple uh, set, you can always snap to points right out of the cloud. And it's going to give you the diameter, let you choose the diameter if it's within a certain range. Uh, but this is always an option. And anytime it changes directions, you click two more points. Um, you know, let it do what it's doing right here. Oops, that was the wrong option. And what I had shown earlier uh, in the demonstration was having the T uh, right here. This is uh, incorrect the way that it draws in here. And I'll show you, normally I just put the lateral uh, into the uh, catalog. But what I can do with this is actually let the software auto-correct it for me. And I'll show you what I mean by this. So if I were to continue this run here, we'll say I'll continue off this T and the T is the wrong choice but still the software is going to let, gonna let you uh, fix that so all I have to do is tell the software that these objects are connected and once I do what's called apply constraints it's going to take this line sees it as being all one line and then it's going to fix it and if I put it back in a shade mode you can see. Now, again, the way I would do this, just put the lateral in the, uh, in the catalog. Now, if I want to continue this run, for example, um, just walk the run, continue. I choose whichever end I want to continue from or whichever piece. Uh, and actually, what I do is I use VirtuServe uh, to, to select the points. And here's that from a different angle. And what I want to do is bring it over this way. So two points. 
and we're going to get the 45 degree elbow. You see it brings the first pipe up to it, comes to the second one, uh, and then I want to go ahead and put in my flange here. Now I have a couple of ways to insert this. I actually toggle it to insert it by face, and then I just click a point right on the face of that flange. All right. Now if I need solids, I can do that. If I need uh, plant 3D objects, I can do that as well. And to do that, it's real simple. Uh, you just do export, choose whichever ones you want. I'll just say plant 3D solids. It's going to create these for me. And you can see I now have an overlay of these objects. And if I highlight them, I can click the plus symbol to continue piping. Uh, I could go over here and create an isometric. Uh, there's lots of things. And all of that stuff at this point would be, you know, plant 3D functionality. Okay. So what I want to do here now is uh, some structural steel. And we have a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, and you can do it with structural steel or concrete, you know, whatever you feel. We have a bunch of different options here um, from, from wide flanges to angles to channels to, you know, hollow steel shapes, that kind of thing. Um, what I do here is a method called postponed fitting. Now, you can do them one at a time. The way that postponed fitting works is that if I were to go here, all I need to do is click two points on each uh, column. So let's say here and here. If I pick two on this one, I can do that. Uh, and then I can even switch to a different scan and get some other pieces in here like these two. These are in a different area. Uh, so it's nice to be able to get these as well. And if I go back to AutoCAD, you're going to see a bunch of these kind of boxes here, but they're not really fit. Now what this is doing is kind of storing it for later. So now I'm, I'm done. It says, do you want to fit these five beams? I say yes, and I watch. It's going to go to each one and just kind of shift it into place. It's going to extend it as far as it can see it. It's going to match it up to the data. It's going to give it the right orientation, etc. And then all I have to do is turn on my shade mode. And you can see these pieces in here. Now there's a couple of other uh, tricks I like to use um, with VirtuServe especially. A uh, very straightforward tubing trick is, is good. Uh, or any kind of handrail, something like this. We'll go over to the other scan. I, I believe there are some steps in there. Here we go. And the first thing I want to do is set my size for the handrail. Um, you could do this any number of ways. Uh, just by manually setting it. I do a set size macro here that is just going to feed that diameter for me. You only have to do that once. So then what I do is I'm just going to trace around this. doesn't have to be, you know, dead on line. doesn't have to be uh, in the middle because it's going to have sort of a smoothing feature at the end of it. I'll just bring this around. I believe it continues on the other end. Yes, that should be the same one. And generally around curves, I try to give it a few more points uh, just to make sure that it reads that curve uh, as best as possible here. And on the straightest segments, you don't have to be um, so picky. That should be fine. Transform macro. And going back into AutoCAD, you can see that handrail right there. So you just kind of repeat that for some of the other ones. It's a nice way to do it, especially for something that is uh, not a consistent shape. You know, handrails change from, from spot to spot. Uh, as far as the uh, steps, what I would probably do let me find, make sure this is the 
best scan for it, I believe it is. There we go, that's a good one. Uh, what I start with is a 3D box macro that we've created over here, and it's really a pretty straightforward thing. Uh, you just start by clicking two points along any sort of axis or seam, and then we want to actually provide it sort of those box points. So there's a up left or upper left corner. Then I'm going to go to the bottom right corner, and then I'm going to give it the depth of the step. So if you can see in AutoCAD, this is what I was given, or what I created. And then I'll go ahead and split screen this for us, just so we can see. Then we do sort of um, a way to create an array of objects. Really, you just want to give it a start point and an end point. I usually pick the seam here. Then I want to give it the distance between items along the path. Generally, I'll pick in the center of two different steps and just let it adjust it for you. Pretty easy, though, uh, to create steps like that. Now, this is just a, a small amount of, of what we can do here. What I would probably also do is... Um, let me just export the steel real quick. Or not export it, but convert them to uh, solids. And I'll do the same thing with the piping. Now, the reason I like to do that is because you can use a number of commands here. Flat shot is a good one because it's going to let me create 2D geometry of everything giving it the true angle, the true insertion, or the true angle. Uh, what I do here is I just simply move it, and I find a displacement point that I can match over here, like this. And then if I go back to wireframe, let me just turn off all the 3D stuff. go. There's my 2D line work. If we overlay it on the cloud, you can see everything. 